We're doing very few gigs, and we've kind of slowed down on our touring. So I started this about four years ago with uh, Sia, and my partner Monica got it going for yeah. me, just mentioning to Sia, can you help Kate get this solo record out? Wow. And I think I finally just gave myself permission to just do it, you know, mm -hmm. get it out there and go for now, it. Now, you mentioned Sia. What was she like to work with? Oh. And what, what does she look like, actually? What's <laughs> she's, underneath that wig? She's beautiful. Okay. She's blonde and beautiful and funny and always laughing. Her laugh just kind of rings in your head. Oh. And she's very sweet and she loves dogs and she'd like to be just curled up, you know, rather than be on stage. She'd rather be curled up in her bed, mm -hmm. you know, with her dogs and her husband writing a fabulous hit song yes. but you know she's uh she's not really shy but i think it's a really great thing that she's done with the the wigs because the b52s when we wore wigs mm -hmm. back in the day we wore lots of different wigs we had names for them we had uh <laughs> stairway to heaven and the beaver tail and cindy had one that was a bird cage um it was literally chicken wire. <laughs> Are yes. you serious? Yeah, yeah. We had a whole big case for them. So the B-52's um, influence is felt with your work with Sia, but also uh, with this new music. How much yes. is it like the B-52's, and is it like something new? It's really something new, but there's going to be an unmistakable link to the B-52's mm -hmm. because of my voice. But we didn't set out with any agenda like it has to, you know, not sound like the B-52's mm -hmm. or it should sound like the B-52's because... C and I were, uh, wrote with these different writing partners that she's worked with before, yeah. Dallas Austin and Chris Braid oh, and Nick yeah. Valencia from The Strokes and yeah. Tim wow. Anderson. So we, we just went and worked with these different people and it was just like magic, you know, it was a different experience every time with each person, a different song sort of came about with a different kind of feel. What did they make of working with you? Did they walk in the room and was it completely, we are not worthy <laughs> reference oh, all around? Like we are today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I felt nervous because although I always jam with the B-52s and we write together, mm -hmm. It was a challenge to write with different people. I know Sia and I knew it would work with Sia, but you know, working with uh, each time it was like one day and we'd get a great song and the demo. So it's very wow. important. But our look really stemmed from our look going to parties. It wasn't really thought out. It was thrift store uh, and it wasn't meant to be glamorous. So we, we didn't do it to look beautiful. We just did it as this kind of fun thing, almost like Sia's wigs now. Hmm. It's, it was kind of a transformation in a way, sort of a disguise to give us the courage to play on stage when we first started. Oh. <laughs> it seems you waited a long time to do this. I didn't even wait. I just didn't do it. I mean, I tried. I tried some various uh, ways to do it. I wrote songs. I, I'm a pretty prolific songwriter, but I just never really gave myself permission to just get it done. Um, and Monica was very, very instrumental in helping me finish it or get it out to the world and really do it. Um, she mentioned to Sia that this is something I've wanted to do all my life, and I'd written all these songs before but never got them out to the world. And um, so Sia said, I'll help, you know. So we started going on writing sessions, and we wrote the whole record and, and more. Um, I almost have enough for another record. Well, it's something I've wanted to do forever, you know. I've always said, I'm going to do that solo record. And I actually wrote songs uh, about 12 years ago. I wrote a whole album worth of songs performed some of them at Joe's Pub and uh, did a little tour, but then the B-52 started to write Funplex, which was all-consuming, and as usual, I got back into the mothership, <laughs> and uh, I never got those songs out. So when I was, um, actually, this song, We Just Did Bring Your Arms, was based on a trip that Sia and Monica and I, my partner Monica and I, took uh, to Mexico when we witnessed this sea turtle rescue. So during that trip, um, Monica said to Sia, would you like to help Kate get this thing started? And she said, yes, I would. So, um, you know, we started writing together, and that was the start of a beautiful this collaboration. Album, do you think, do you, do you write a different type of song for this than you would if you were in the B-52s? I really didn't have a, a you know, a set plan, because uh, people keep asking that, like, if I had you know, some sort of agenda to not be like the B-52s, or try to be a little bit like the B-52s, but there was really, every time we went to write a song, it's just sort of a magical happening that um, when you bring people together, and when I went with Sia, we went with different people that she wrote with, so it was a different kind of, almost like cooking, you know, every time it would be something different, and uh, each time, you know, we didn't know where we were headed. All I know is I had some lyrics, I had some titles, and it didn't always 
go the way I thought it would go even with the title and the lyrics. It would be changed, you know, the meaning would change of the song or something, and so you would add some lyrics and we'd retrofit them to the melody, which is kind of her secret sauce, was get the melody first and get the hooks and then shape the lyrics to that. So uh, each time we went on a writing session, we got a great song and a, and a demo. So it was a pretty, a pretty quick process. And, um, but there was no like plan to, you know, make it, let's make it really pop or let's make it, you know, no, they this put that. that pop current pop culture noise uh, sound into your songs, and it's great. I mean, the choruses, you jump up and down. Well, that's really good. I mean, I think a lot of that is um, a combination of me and Sia, and Sia's the pop diva, and I'm, you know, more sort of old school, I guess, in the B-52s. Um, I think the combination of my voice, and I, I had, the, you know, a lot of lyrics and ideas for the songs because it was my record, but when I collaborated with Sia, she has a pop sensibility, too, and I do, too. I think a lot of the B-52 stuff has a, has a you know, pop sensibility in the sense that we have choruses that kind of kick. Yeah, they do kick. And they're, and it reminded me of some of these Katy Perry, who I love, by the way. I do, too. But, you know, so, I don't yeah. want I mean, you just had a great jump in chorus. You just released your debut solo album. What's taking yes. you so long? Well, I finally gave myself permission to do it. I'm I'm pretty prolific songwriter, and I've written songs for many years, but... I needed some way to just get it out, and sort of the fire in my rocket ship was my partner Monica asked our friend Sia to help me get this project off the ground. So she said, yes, I'd love to help Kate. So we started writing sessions in L.A., and we started going to different writers that she'd worked with before and collaborating, and each time we did it, we got a great song and a great demo, and it was a joy to work with Sia because she laughs. You know, we just laugh and have fun and collaborate, which is... We call her sweet genius because she just is an amazing person. Yeah, Sia is obviously very, very quirky mm. as well. How did you, you two come <laughs> to meet? We met through the band Betty, um, our friends, mutual friends, and we just met her. I didn't know who she was at all. And in this birthday party, we were all required to sing a song to the birthday girl. So she got up and sang, and I was like, whoa, who is this person? You know, but we became friends before I knew that Sia was Sia. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it was it had a good basis for our friendship. And uh, she is really like someone that you hear her laugh in your head, you know. <laughs> All aspects of my voice and also just the lyrics are just so much fun to write lyrics and melodies. One of those lyrics, and you were saying that Sia would write a melody first and then um, fit lyrics to it, which is a good secret, which I'm going to be t well, taking note of. Um, well, we'd write together. I mean, we'd write the melodies together. Um, so it was a sort of jamming process. But one of them, which I loved as well, Bring Your Arms, that's an unusual enough uh, subject matter, isn't it? That is one that well, Sia wrote three songs by herself um, and other co-writers, um, but I wasn't involved in three of the songs because when she was going to help me write, she was already writing her own, you know, starting to write for her own record. So she just called and said, um, "Oh, I've you know written a song for you. I've got. I, I didn't mean to. You know, she was just writing, and then all of a sudden she said, "I realized this song is for you. It's like perfect, and it was something." I felt like she really channeled my spirit there with writing that. And it was about um, a trip that she and my partner Monica and I took to Tulum, Mexico. And we witnessed a sea turtle rescue. So that's what that's about. It's a little obscure when you hear it. You don't know exactly what it's about. But, you know, they're uh, running with a light bulb because we saw these flashlights down on the beach. And they were rescuing, they were reburying right. sea turtle eggs. Uh, bottoms up. What's that about? Well, that is a song about addiction, and I had those lyrics, um, and Sia, you know, it's no secret that she's, you know, recovered, um, and she's, you know, been through a lot of hell, you right. know, with addiction, and so that's a theme of hers, you know, one, two, three, drink, one, two, three, yeah. drink, <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, I had, these, I had these lyrics, bottoms up with the top down, and your addiction to fiction and friction, and so we collaborated on those lyrics, and uh, it really is, a, it, the whole song is about addiction, but the, and it was also written with Nick Valencia of The Strokes, mm. so oh. it has this real upbeat feel, and it's funny, because I was singing it, you know, it's na-na-na-na-na-na-na, and you know, it's all about addiction, but it has a very upbeat feel. Well, I mean, it's it like... Is, it is a, a lifeline kind of song.